Hello. Kiran conveniently called in sick today and if you look outside it's absolutely miserable. Well at least the motorcycle that I'm riding today is somewhat enjoyable and very interesting. This is the all new Pulsar N160 and Bajaj claimed that this bike can literally lock horns with all of its competitors in each and every way possible. Well, as you just saw, the conditions on the day we had the bike were absolutely miserable. The conditions were so bad that everyone had to retreat back to the hotel where the launch was based at. So sorry for the lack of the usual beauty shots and rollers. Coming back to the bike, we had gotten a taste of what the new Pulsar N model range from Bajaj had to offer way back in November last year when they had launched the N250 and F250. I was riding the N250, so this chassis and setup was very familiar to me. I thoroughly enjoyed my time with the N250 and well, the N160 is basically the baby brother that tries to be more lean rather than buff. Coming to the power and torque, the N160 actually makes 0.1 Nm of more torque than the NS160 but somehow makes 1.2 bhp less. But that's not the whole story. Because the thing is, Bajaj is saying that the N160 isn't a direct replacement for the NS160 and both models will coexist with each other because the target audience is different and the demand for the older NS is still there. That's why both bikes will coexist. But again, on paper is not where it matters. When you're actually riding this thing, this engine feels much more energetic and much more active because of the amazing torque curve that Bajaj has been able to extract out of this 160cc single cylinder engine. It feels much more active, it feels more energetic to accelerate and that's because of the amazing mid-range that this bike has and it feels very torquey and you can literally pick it up from any RPM. Coming to the looks, the N160 and N250 look almost identical apart from these graphics over here which are now finished in matte rather than gloss and the lack of a big bulky muffler which is now replaced by an underbelly exhaust. And in total, the N160 actually weighs almost 10 kilograms lighter than the N250 and that's because of the revised exhaust system and the engine shrinking in size. But a lot of people will complain that the N160 still weighs more than its direct rival which is the Apache but that is with good reason. Mainly because of stuff like this, the brakes are actually 30mm bigger both front and back compared to the Apache. This is a 300mm disc and it also has a 230mm disc at the rear compared to the Apache's 270mm disc at the front and 200mm disc at the rear. And also the front tyre of the Pulsar N160 is larger and more girthier than the Apache RTRs. Also, the Pulsar N160's fuel tank is 14 litres which is 2 litres more than the Apache and calculate the claimed fuel economy of the bike which is 48.5 kmpl. On paper, this bike can do 679 kilometres in a single tank. Now coming to the riding, I am not Kiran by any means, so I wasn't scraping my knees on chicanes but what I can tell you is how it is as an urban stormer. It was well how you expect it to be, super comfy, very manoeuvrable and very smooth. I got a chance to take it on the highway and that's where I was impressed the most. I got a chance to take it on the highway and that's where I was impressed yet again. Don't get me wrong, it isn't a touring bike by any means, but I could easily cruise at 80 to 90 km an hour without any vibrations. Yes, vibrations weren't absent because those speeds are at the higher end of what this motorcycle is capable of, but compared to the RTR 160, it was definitely more smooth and comfy at highway cruising speeds. The suspension up front are 37mm telescopic shocks and new Nitrox monoshock suspension at the rear which come together and give the N160 the right comfort it has as well as the cornering confidence that most rookie riders want. The N160 comes equipped with dual channel ABS but also has the option for single channel ABS which is a good option to have if you know you aren't going to be sending it in the twisties all the time. The infinity display is very bright pretty easy to look at with its classic analog tack in the middle and comes with a fuel range meter and a gear position indicator. The N160 also has a USB charging port to charge your phone while riding. 
Coming to the seating position, the N160 feels spot on. And this is one of the main reasons why it feels so confidence inspiring while riding it because you feel like you're on top of the bike and you feel like you're in control. And that's because the foot pegs are in the correct position, the seating position is just right and even the handlebars are in the correct position. I thoroughly enjoyed my experience with the N250 and well, the N160 feels like a more lighter and more toned down version of the N250. The engine characteristics are the same, the riding characteristics are the same. Of course, it being 10 kgs lighter, it makes a little bit of a difference while riding, especially in the corners, you can feel less weight and the high speed stability probably isn't as good as the N250, but it's hardly noticeable. Moreover, the more interesting fact is that the N160 holds its own when you're actually going on the highway. I was cruising in fifth gear at 80, 90 kilometers an hour and it felt very refined, more refined than the Apache, I would say. The Apache starts getting in a lot of vibration and it feels like the engine is losing its grunt at the top end. The N160 felt very refined, very stable and it felt like it could do this for a long time and it was more of the rider, which is me, who was letting go uh, time and time again because, well, it was raining, it was treacherous and it was a day full of misery. And that is the thing about the new Pulsar N160. It may not be a master of any trade, but it is definitely the jack of all trades. Yes, the Apache feels sharper, more precise while carving the road, but be honest with yourself. How many times are you going to find yourself doing that sort of riding? And moreover, it was not like the N160 couldn't hold its own. In fact, I would say the N160 was an easier bike to approach for that style of riding. It was more forgiving. And where the Apache falls short, the Pulsar consistently shines through. The N160 doesn't have any standout feature or any standout element that really shines through. But what really shines through is that it's good at almost everything it does. Whereas its competitors like the Apache might be really good at handling or at the top end of the engine's performance. This thing is just good in almost everything that it does. It's great in the city, it's great on the highway. The engine's really nice, the suspension is really nice, the brakes are really nice. And that's the good thing about it because for a rookie rider, this is one of the best options out there because it's not like you have to get adapted to the motorcycle for your riding style because the motorcycle is just a very neutral thing. Thank you so much for watching this video. Subscribe to our channel, like this video and share it with your friends. Let me know in the comments down below what would you choose. Would you choose the N160 or the RTR 160 for Valve? Uh, and also check out TDH Classifieds where we started a new bike segment. So if you're interested in buying some used performance bikes, do check out TDH Classifieds slash motorcycles.